a couple surprises from spring practice. Um, and it will start with the player or players that surprised us most in spring ball. I want to start with you and, uh, and get maybe a guy or two that, that surprised you a little bit in, in any way. Right. Um, and you know, unless you want me to go, cause you look like you're thinking, no, um, I'm just trying to think of a way to frame it. You know, I'm, People came into spring ball really thinking that Michigan needed someone, some sort of savior in the transfer portal at quarterback. And again, we saw one day of spring practice. We don't get to see practices when we go to availability, but I liked what I saw from both Alex Orgy and Davis Warren, a uh, Warren in particular. Um, you know, I walk away from this feeling, and maybe it's, I don't know if maybe I shouldn't be surprised by it, but when you think about, who you could be surprised by on the offensive side of the ball. I thought that the quarterbacks in the spring game in particular, um, listen, it's not where it needs to be yet, especially with a guy like Alex Orgy, but you know, if that's the two that are battling it out, plus, you know, Jack Tuttle and fall camp, I think I'm kind of at peace with that. And, you know, that might bother some people. Um, you know, I'm not going to be shy about what my expectation for this team is. Like, I think they're probably, a 10 win football team that finishes just short of winning a big 10 title has a chance to beat Ohio state. Um, I think with the, the construction of this roster, I think they can still find a way to do that with what they have. And if you'd asked me in January or February, if that would have been the case at quarterback, I probably would have been a little shakier on that, but I, I come out of spring ball surprised by maybe how at ease I am with where they're at right now. Yeah. I, I think that's a, that's a fair point. Um, and it, it is interesting. It doesn't seem like they're going to pursue a quarterback. That is maybe a little bit surprising to me as well. So I think quarterback is is a great answer there. Um, I guess I'll stick on offense and maybe we'll do one on defense as well. Like this is, again, so it's surprising in any way. This is more of just a, a player that kind of came out of nowhere. But he's, you know, I know I'm smiling here because I said I was a Breon Ishmael guy earlier in the week. I'm becoming a Deacon Tony Ellie guy or, or Tonelli. <laughs> sorry. That's how you pronounce it. Guy who's the tight end. Sharon Moore said on John Jansen's podcast this week that he's kind of surged up into that number four spot behind Colston Loveland, uh, Max Bredesen, Marlon Klein, and then it's Deacon Tonelli. But when you factor in that Max Bredesen is a little bit more of a fullback and Michigan plays a lot of tight ends, like that four spot is really kind of like a maybe spot three and a half. Like that's a guy that that plays a little bit. Um, and then I went down a, a Deacon Tonelli rabbit hole as we were prepping for the show. I mean, this kid is awesome. He, he's a Harbaugh guy through and through. Like they had a meeting, uh, Harbaugh had hour long meetings with each recruit on their official visits this is from Zach Libby a year or so ago. And they kept waving off the recruiting staff that, that said to, Hey, the hour's up. Like we got to get another family in here. They went for multiple hours. Harbaugh kept saying, no, just come back later. Or whatever, because they were talking football. Deacon Tonelli is in love with football. He said, uh, Jim Harbaugh said about him, he's hardworking, blue collar guy, loves Michigan since the uh, day he stepped onto campus. You can tell his eyes light up like somebody walking into an all you can eat buffet and going, It's all you can eat. It's all you can eat. Have at it. Um, <laughs> so, and he God. said that, and this is a year ago or a year and a half ago, he said that Deacon Tonelli, who's a sophomore now, uh, looked identical to Colston Loveland, damn near identical, really good basketball player, multi-year starter and basketball player. Um, so none of that means that he's a great, but he looked good on his catch from Davis Warren. I thought he turned up field well and, and gained 35 yards. And it was kind of one of those bigger plays in the spring game, but he's a, he's a surprise to me. I mean, other guys I'm sure surprised me, but I've now become infatuated with Deacon Tonelli. I mean, his word carries a lot of weight when it comes to all-you-can-eat buffets and football. <laughs> That's a very specific Venn diagram that I feel like uh, – maybe it's not that specific. I mean, football players do like to eat. But, um, yeah, that's, I, I mean, they're in good hands at tight end as well. So, um, I'm yeah, I'm, I guess we'll, uh, we'll get into position group in a second. But just a little teaser of that. I, I do feel better about what they have depth-wise at tight end than I did mm -hmm. coming into spring. Who's your guy on defense that surprised you, if anybody? Surprising guy in defense. Um, I would probably say maybe it shouldn't be a surprise, and it's definitely 
not going to be under the radar anymore. Jire Hill looked pretty darn good when we saw him in the spring game. Yeah. DJ Waller now out the door. Uh, I feel like mm-hmm. he's probably your number two cornerback now. Uh, Jire Hill is. And if that's the case, I mean, I think you, uh, you know, he's got a little bit of juice to him too. He made that, the pass break up along the sideline to Peyton O'Leary. And then he stands Stood over him and kind of flexes and, in a game, yeah, that's, that's probably 15. a 15 yard penalty, but I like I like the fire. I like the competitiveness. Um to me, I think probably a, a bit of a pleasant surprise. You know, you know, freshman to sophomore year, that's a huge leap to make. Um, and it looks like so far he's positioned himself. Probably need a little depth there now that Waller is in the portal, but if he's your number two cornerback, I, I'm I think I'm pretty okay with that. I am too. Um I thought he was really impressive. I I liked him a year ago, but he looks even bigger now. And, you know, it it takes some time. Like, I remember when we talked to Will Johnson a couple times last summer and then into the season, and you ask about the younger guys, and one of the big things is just just mentally, you know, in in this system. Like, it's just tough to be a young guy. You have to be a special talent like Will Johnson. And even then, Will Johnson was kind of platooning for a while his freshman year, and his big break was actually Jamon Green getting – you know, he didn't want this to happen, but getting hit over the head by Sparties. So, um, you know, and then he started his first game and everything like that. So it takes time for some of these young defensive backs, but Jair Hill has kind of stepped up. I'm going to stick with another quote unquote young defensive back because he's technically still at the tail end here of his sophomore year. But Zeke Barry, like I just didn't necessarily know one, they would let him with the lack of depth at safety get reps uh, at nickel and two, that it would sound like he's the favorite to start at nickel. I know Jade McBurrow's in the mix as well. Uh, They kind of moved Cody Jones back to safety. It looks like based on the spring game. And then, you know, of course he's kind of more of a nickel by trade as is, but Zeke Barry, like is just an impressive guy. I know we talked about him on Monday coming out of the spring game, but I'm just surprised that and maybe again, I shouldn't have been, but you know, I just didn't know that he would completely kind of take this opportunity and run with it as Sharon Moore uh, put it. So I, I think he's, uh, you know, he's got a bright future here this fall. Yeah. And I'm not overly surprised by it either. I mean, I think Zeke Barry is a guy that we, I think we talked about this on our show the other night where it is such in a scenario where he doesn't get hurt in camp last year. I think maybe he's a guy that steps into the role that Keon Saab ultimately had. So uh, for me, I'm, I'm not super surprised about it again. Uh, it does feel a little light back there now with some of the injuries they've had and obviously some of the moves uh, in the portal, but Zeke Barry to me, I mean, there is no one-to-one replacement to Rod Moore on this roster, but I think they do a lot of the same things and I'm eager for him to get an opportunity. Other surprises, probably Breon Ishmael, I uh, have to mention him <laughs> and uh, you know, Guy. probably Eno Adam moving back inside and, and kind of looking the part there. Um, you know, pretty status quo along the defense, I would say, elsewhere. Probably some more surprises we failed to mention on offense, but uh, maybe surprised that the kicker looks a little bit more shaky um, than we thought. But I think we kind of came into spring knowing that there was a good chance they would hit the portal for that position. Uh, what position group surprised you the most? Uh, either side of ball that you want to start on? I mean, I had a, I hit on it. I cheated with two quarterbacks in the segment before, but yeah, I'll say the wide receivers. I think I'm pretty comfortable with the top three that they have with Frederick Moore, with Tyler Morris, who's their number one right now with Samaj Morgan. Um, depth is the question there, but you know, if we're, we're going into this season where all you need to do is add a couple, you know, maybe some veteran guys add a bigger body somewhere. I think that they they have the goods to do that there as well. Uh, Fred Moore in particular was a guy that stood out to me in the spring game, and I think who's poised for a, a breakout role. So, again, um, really there's not a ton of surprises on offense to me because everything is sort of wide open. I mean, there's one starter returning from last year's team in, in the form of Colston Loveland, but I think the top group of wide receivers, I, you know, I, I think they're going to be just fine there, to be frank. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure they'll probably add a guy or two. And we'll see, like, what caliber is is that a guy that's going to start, you know, or is it a guy who's more I, of, you know, pushing I would say it's probably a- like a Dalen Baldwin type. Like, that feels sort of like the yeah. archetype of what they might add here. Yeah, I, I would hope maybe they find somebody that can impact a little bit more. And Dalen Baldwin's my former neighbor, so I, I like the guy, but... 
Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what they add there. I guess I'll stick with my surprise on offense being that the tight end group looks a lot more deep because I think Zach Marshall uh, could also play if they needed him to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then over to the defensive side of the ball, I, I'd say it's the depth at edge surprise me and let me pull up the depth chart here um right now because like the fours and fives on that group are like dominic nichols uh, who looked pretty good as a freshman in the spring game brian ishmael americ kumba who sharon moore says has freakish talent for a young guy but you have Derek moore josiah stewart then it's tj guy and cam brant then it's tyler mclaurin and Keyshawn bennett uh, guys who have been around for a long time. And then there's kind of those more talented guys, maybe, that just don't have the experience that could push, like the guys we mentioned. Dom Nichols looked good, and he's only been here for a couple months. Like, I think the edge room's in really good hands. And Eno Etta said it uh, when we were talking to him after the spring game. He said one of the reasons why he moved inside was because they have so many good players on the edge, and they needed more depth uh, mm-hmm. at tackle. So it, I just didn't. It, it was a little bit more of a question mark coming into spring because you knew that the two guys they had, you knew that guy has been around for a while, but it just looks like more guys have emerged, uh, I guess, no pun intended, than, than maybe I originally thought. I wrote about this a few months ago, and I feel like they have like 900 some odd snaps to replace on the edge or something, which it's a lot because, you know, they, they rotate their edge guys quite a bit. Uh, something, you know, tying this in with NFL draft, something to keep an eye on this weekend. I, I know there's a lot of people that are, con- you know, losing Mike Elston hurt. Like that's, he's one of the better developers of talent in the country, but remember the names Marshawn Neeland from Western Michigan and Braden Fisk from Florida state, two guys who started their career at Western Michigan. Uh, Neeland finished his career there and played under Lou Esposito. Uh, they're going to go pretty high. Uh, maybe one of them sneaks into the first round. I'm not a hundred percent sure what the consensus is on that, but they're going to go pretty high, um, guys that developed. So, to me, you look like you look at this room that they have, uh, and it's a lot of guys with tools. I mean, Ishmael, he came in at like 210 pounds soaking wet. He's up to like 265 now. Uh, Kumba was an international guy that, um, you know, very raw, still kind of learning the tricks of the trade. Um, you know, Nichols, uh, I know the Lugard that they brought in uh, in this last recruiting class. I don't think he, he he's not with them yet, but. You look at the guys that they brought in. I, I just I don't have a lot of concerns there. Um, to pivot into what my surprise group would be, I think it's the depth at linebacker. I, I think we came into this spring knowing Ernest Hausman, Jay Sean Barham. It's a pretty damn good combo. Um, but Jimmy Rolder looks like a guy that you can put out there and, and trust uh, to to get the job done. Uh, Cole Sullivan, I think of all these guys, um, especially the young guys. We talk about players that are under-recruited that are more ready to play than you think they are. He probably needs to put on another 10, 15 pounds before the season starts, but man, oh man, like he was playing at a different speed out there than those other guys were, and they're they're in good hands with Jeremiah Beasley. Uh, Jaden Hood is a senior who's waited for an opportunity that I thought played fairly well. So, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we come into this thinking, oh, well, Nikai Hill Green's in the transfer portal. They need to go get that guy. No, I don't think so. They're fine here, and and I'm I think they're pretty at peace with what they have in that room. So you're saying you're you're hoping that Cole Sullivan takes advantage of the all you can eat buffet in Justin Tress's weight room? I would assume. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to take advantage of it. True. Yeah, I'm sure you you say that now, but you go through one workout probably with those guys, and we'd be absolutely dying. But um, I'd love to do it once just to say I did. Write an article about it. They would exactly. laugh. They would laugh so hard. I would be laughed out of the building and probably can't ever come back. <laughs> it takes a lot, man. It takes a lot for these. I mean, these guys are. Uh, they, it's crazy what they put themselves through, but it pays off on the field. And I, I agree with you. I think some of these, you know, Cole Sullivan, these guys, by fall, they're going to look different. They're going to be a little bit more ready to play, and these first few months just help them. You know along that curve as they as a transition to college football players 